Okay, uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to uh, use this talk here and also to organize uh, this wonderful conference, which I'm trying a lot. Yeah, so I'm uh, also showing some new relations uh, we have found for Einstein and Nitz, Andrew Tulze, and this is um, one body work I did together with Thomas Taylor from North Eastern University. Oh, so the, the talk will be mainly about this paper which has been appeared last Friday, but the whole work is based on this ongoing research published in this other four applications. So, uh, to compute Einstein um, Young Mills, I'm going to say three level. Um, basically, it's, uh, you can uh, just um, apply this uh, basic building blocks uh, and apply this applicable uh, recursion relation, and then you get higher point articles. So, you start with three drawn amplitudes, three graviton amplitude, and a mixed amplitude involving two drones and one graviton. And out of these building blocks, you get for example, I compute um, this five point um, this, sorry, this four point amplitude with three plumes and one graviton. And uh, graviton has polarization minus minus and helicity set minus minus. And of course you could also compute it just by using standard Feynman rules, but we uh, saved up recursion relations are much more convenient to arrive at this result. However, what I want to show you is that uh, when deriving um, this is uh, amplitudes from strings you actually uh, much more information and you will find some new form of, of this um, Einstein and Mills amplitude which you, you can't easily see or which which uh, you weren't able to see from just by the field theory. So let's let's move on to, to string theory and, and discuss Einstein and Mills amplitudes at three level in string theory. So in string theory the, the blue ones are just um, lowest um, States of open strings and the graviton comes from the lower state of closed strings and when you scatter them at three level, uh, the inductive world sheet is a disk which can be mapped to this upper half plane. And then the closed strings are inserted to vertex operators and in this um, bulk, uh, while the open strings are, are aligned at this uh, boundary of the disk. So you see already there's a natural order of the gluons along this boundary. And, uh, these positions are the vertex operator positions, so you insert some um, conformal fields uh, which represent um, the excitation of, of the strings. For example, here the simplest case are these open string fields uh, which uh, come from, which describe plane waves uh, of the open string vertex operators and then you just get this Kubernetes like factors. And for the closed string, um, similar with this uh, correlation function, but there's already um, a difference then if, if you would do the whole thing just on the sphere, which, which might be the case you now from, from uh, studying string theory, uh, because there's a mixing between holomorphic and anti-holomorphic fields uh, with the closed string positions, which gives this uh, mixing of um, holomorphic and anti-holomorphic fields. This is simply um, uh, due to the fact that you have a boundary here. You can also understand it as Green's function when you put in electrodynamics and you um, introduce a method of images and then you also find that there's this is, um, additional relation function. In string series is also known as a, um, as a double matrix that you essentially go to the double cover, which is a sphere, and then you treat the anti-holomorphic positions as independent positions and apply your standard um, conformal field theory relation functions. And then there's of course also um, interactions between uh, closed string fields and open string fields as a boundary which gives this terms. These are just uh, some, some examples of, of conformal fields. Uh, of course there are also fermions and, and bosons and other correlators which will enter the computation, but this will not um, be relevant for us. But what we uh, just need to know is that uh, qualitatively uh, we have to compute such an integral. So you see that this, this plane wave relation functions enter here, like for example the first term um, is, is here. So these are the, the so-called Kovanilsen like factors and what is important is that this SIJs here are, are real numbers, so some of the kinematic invariants enter here. And we have an integration along the boundary for the open strings 
uh, which is dictated, uh, which dictates the ordering of the open strings, so this gives the natural ordering of the open strings. And then in that case, we just consider one closed string, so in the closed string we allow for a different left and right moving momentum, q1 and q2, because this actually will, is precisely the source where we will get new informations for our actual movements on the I consider different left and right moving momentum for the, for the ground tone. And then we have, of course, a momentum conservation. This actually should be a KI, and then these factors. So how, how, do, how should we do this integration? I mean, the main complication enters because we have this mixing of holomorphic and antihomorphic uh, coordinates, uh, and of course also this um, mixing of real coordinates and complex coordinates. That means that you cannot just proceed like, uh, like you would do in via your KIT relations, because in KIT you have an explicit decoupling of holomorphic and antiholomorphic fields, so in other words, you don't have this correlator here. So you have to do um, in a different way, I mean, still, still uh, you can apply uh, the KIT method, which means that you, you try to disentangle the holomorphic and antiholomorphic integrations um, into real integrations, but uh, you have to properly take into account the the monotone is appearing, and this is a, a quite complicated problem, but it can be solved. Uh, so this is essentially boils down to monotone, monotone in the problem on the complex plane. Uh, and as a result, will be that any any um, mixed amplitude involving N O open and N C closed strings will essentially be, be uh, uh, N O plus two times N C for Q open string amplitude. So well, that means uh, any mixed amplitude boils down to the pure open string amplitude is subject to this monotony phases. Well, that this will give um, um, some um, relations between amplitudes involving both open and closed strings and pure open string amplitudes. To, to just to, to um, exemplify these words, uh, let me just show you the simplest case we have set up at the beginning, namely just one closed string with uh, different left and right moving momenta, and, and this is the result. I mean, this phase factors, here's the exponential subject to this definitions, I mean, don't worry about them. The main the key thing is that here are the, the color ordered open string amplitudes, so this is n point open string amplitudes, and here we have, we have n minus two open strings and one closed string, so it should be an n point amplitude, a, a pure n point open string amplitude. And that is how it looks like. So that can be computed like that. I mean, this is also the formula we will need um, a lot in the following, but you don't need to remember it. I mean, the key thing is just we have some phase factors and sine factors coming from the monotonies and um, this open string amplitudes here. And um, just to, to, to make an example, when we have just three open strings uh, and one closed string, um, this is what you get from the formula. Does this make the most of Yeah. So what is important is that this is actually a complex amplitude because we also we have a graviton here which is left-right symmetric. Um, but we integrate only over the upper half plane, so you, you, that is the reason you get this phase. It's moreover, since we have different left and right moving momenta, and you shouldn't expect a, a real result here. So what can we do now with this formulas here? We can derive uh, very conveniently without using the BCFW rules, uh, very conveniently any endpoint um, einstein numbers amplitude. So first of all, for the moment, we take we take the two um, closed string momenta of the describing the, the left and right moving part of the graviton vertex operator, uh, we take them equal, because then these two momenta add up to, to Q, which is the graviton momentum. Mm -hmm. And then, um, as we have already seen, the closed string is, is, is replaced or is described by two open strings subject to some monotomy phases. Or in this simple um, four point case, three gluons and one graviton. That is what we get from disentangling the monotonies on the world sheet. 
You get this five point amplitude where the fourth and the fifth gluon are describing its graviton. So the, the four um, has the momentum um, Q1, which is five times one, and the five. This gluon has the same momentum. <coughs> and, and note that we can safely take this collinear limit because the, the fourth and the fifth gluon are not next to each other, so there's no singularity occurring, and so forth. So here you can easily then also derive non mhv amplitudes and uh, you go to the einstein young mills amplitude, it just takes the field theory limit of this string result, which is essentially um, replacing the sine factor by, by its argument. And so what was this? Um, three graviton, um, three gluon, one graviton case, that is the result you get, that's the result I have shown you already at the beginning. And this is a this is a this um, three gluon one graviton amplitude is described by a five gluon amplitude times this factor. But um, as I said, you get also more complicated amplitudes by many protonomination cases. <coughs> well, this is a very convenient way of deriving this um, Einstein Young Mills amplitudes at three level. But uh, what we want to do now in the following is actually we don't want to have this to um, gluon momenta be equal, so the left and right moving momenta of the closed string um, are now um, assumed to be different, because this will give us some important new relations. So we, we take this collinear, um, this collinear parameterization that uh, one gluon takes x times q and the other one minus x times q of the, of the graviton momentum. Of course, sum adds up to q, which is Graviton momentum. And x is a free real parameter, then you can work out from, from string theory because we have derived the string result for a different q1 and q2. That is what, what, you, what we get. So um, we, we get this additional 1 minus x factor in front of all these relations, which is highly non trivial because um, um, you, it's not easy to see that this is at the end a cancel because here the graviton. Um, the graviton state has um, momentum Q, so the X dependence has to drop out here. It's easy to see for the MHV case because then these amplitudes have just this Park Taylor form, and then in the denominator you just have the additional one of minus X factors which cancel this. But it's highly non trivial to, to prove this relation in field theory or for non MHV amplitude, and we have actually used this uh, program by uh, Lenz. Ixen, Johannes Henn and Jan Lefka and um, uh, Schuster to, to prove, for example, the nine-point non, uh, second non-MHV case. In that case, really, this one minus x factor drops out. Well, this is a result we, we got from, from string theory and which um, cannot um, be um, in any way um, obtained by, by a pure um, simple field theory computation. And now we want to see what, what we can do with this, or why, why it is um, important for us to consider this um, x dependence on the right hand side. Uh, because, of course, now we can, um, since x is completely free, we can take x is equal to zero and get some new uh, representation of Einstein and Mills amplitudes. So we take x is equal to zero, then the second gluon describing the the graviton takes all the graviton momentum while the, while the other gluon becomes softer. <coughs> then we have to, um, in our formulas um, from before, we have to, to properly um, perform the soft limit. And so we, we get the split factors from the Manga Gopaki um, paper. And then um, using this formula, we derive the following form of Einstein and Mills amplitudes. So we have n gluons and one graviton, this is the polarization, and um, it is written in terms of the sum over, over this um, n plus one gluon amplitude. So, so you see that we democratically have to interchange this, um, this gluon describing the, describing the, the graviton uh, among all positions or among all um, labels. And this gives uh, the graviton amplitude. But the important point is that now we have here, this is an n plus one point amplitude. 
and, and this is also an M plus one by an amplitude only. So this is different to, to what we had before. We had on the right hand side um, M plus two point amplitudes because we, we had both both clones describing the graviton state. So this is a quite neat formula that uh, gives a one-to-one -one correspondence between um, states from, from here, uh, from, from the einstein young metz amplitude and pure clone amplitudes. This can be also written in terms of um, um, in arbitrary dimensions, so we then uh, just introduce this polarization, and so the uh, polarization vector epsilon and the x, uh, the x was this uh, coordinate, which is dual coordinate, which, um, which already appeared here. So this is a dimension independent formula of, of the einstein young mills amplitudes with n clones and one graviton. And, and as I said, um, here you have a sum over all, over all gluon amplitudes where this, um, this gluon is, is distributed democratically over all locations. Now, um, let's go back to this uh, formula in four dimensions, to the same formula in four dimensions, and let's try to, to relate it to what we know. So in particular, when, when you look at this, this factor here, this may remind you to some formula um, describing MHV endpoint graviton amplitudes by, by Mason Skinner. So this formula can be written in the following way, and then you see this is n gravitons here. We have only one graviton, while the rest is gluons. So that is why here we have a product of of this of these brackets here. But you you might even you might imagine how the generalization to n gravitons might work. Uh, that you uh, essentially should expect factors of additional factors of this of the split split terms or split factors so from the soft limit. Now there's a, a nice uh, coincidence between these two formulas. Are there any questions so far? Then let me go back to, to string theory. So we have um, discussed or introduced this uh, form factor, which um, so we have a iterated integration along the boundary of the disk, uh, where there's this um, open string position obeys this, this restriction, and then there's this Kobanilsen factors. So this integral is, is only well defined, the integral is only well defined if you really integrate x1 is smaller than x2 and so forth, so, because then we don't have um, branches, branch cuts from this factor. So remember that this, this um, money stamps are real numbers, so this, this would cause a branch cuts. So if you, for example, would now um, take um, x3 is smaller than x2, rather than x2 is smaller than 3, subject to this relation. So if you want to, to get some relations between different, that is precisely what we are heading is that we want to get some relation uh, between different orderings of this open string. So, so we have to be careful because we cannot simply change this ordering here because then the integral um, is redefined anymore. So um, we have this monotromies from this non integer part and in order to relate, for example, in integrations where this iteration is um, with different iterations, like for example, now we have x1 is smaller than x2 is smaller than x3, sub subject to this um, color ordering. But if you want to also consider x3 smaller than x2, uh, we have first have to make this, this integral single value it, and then con we can consider some contour integral in okay. We can do an analytic continuation in this coordinates here. So for example, if you would like to your well, analytic continuation in x2, uh, we, we make it first single value, that means we, we put absolute values everywhere, and then we can uh, choose a nice contour in the complex x2 plane. So recall x1, I can choose to be minus infinite, so recall integrating x2 from, from x1 to x3 just gives the or original integral. 
But now we want to also con consider x2 between here, so a different iteration that of course gives a different color ordering and so on. And this we can do now, so we can consider this um, this contour if, as I said, if we put everywhere absolute value is. But there's also uh, some contribution, or there's also we also have to respect this closed string position here, which gives an additional contribution to the to the relations we, we are heading to. So we can now just read off what kind of relations we get here. So here, as I said, this gives the canonical order 1, 2, up to n minus 2. Here we have just 2 and 3 exchanged and so forth. So, so we obtain the following uh, monotony relation. This is also the first term, then we have the spaces, and then 3 and 2 is exchanged. And then we have, in addition, this cube contribution, which comes from the closed string position. So this is a, a, a pure string effect, so it, it starts with an order alpha prime squared, actually. So this is an effect you don't have in field theory. So it will not contribute at field theory at lowest order in, in alpha prime. But uh, what is also interesting is that this tube contribution can be purely expressed in terms of pure open string amplitudes. It's just an example for the five-point case. Then uh, this tube and contribution is, is just parameterized by T3. And then, as I said, it can be expressed in terms of pure five-point amplitudes. I mean, these are full-fledged string on open string amplitudes. So with this, for example, this is a relation for the five-point case, which describes three open strings and one closed string. The so-called monotropy relation uh, reads like that. Note that um, when you, without this tube contribution from the closed string, this will just give the ordinary, uh, by now uh, famous uh, monotropy relation for the pure open string. But here, because of the closed string, this one single closed string, you have this additional uh, tube contribution. Now you can. Here, this we got by analytic con doing performing analytic continuation in X2. We can also do analytic continuation in other coordinates. We get a notation of, of, of these relations. We get lots of, lots of um, linear equations. We can solve them. And actually, what you can find is that um, you can, the system allows you to completely uh, compute these mixed amplitudes in terms of the pure open string amplitudes. Because here on the, on the right hand side you have the pure open string amplitude, so you can solve this for the, for the mixed amplitude and express the mixed amplitude in terms of the, of the open string amplitudes only. Now, what, what can we learn for field theory from this? So we can extract uh, various amplitude relations as, as it was also the case for the pure open string um, monotropy relations. Remember for from them you got the KK and the Kleist-Kolf and the ECJ relations. And now let's see what we get from, from the, those relations. So this is a mixed amplitude. I mean, because of dimensionality, um, the, lowest, the lowest piece uh, starts with alpha prime. This is simply because the einstein young mills amplitude has this, this kinematical SIJ in front of it, which it's with alpha prime. The next term, as I said, that is why the reason I stress that this, our amplitudes are complex. The next um, term is complex, and then we have a real term which essentially describes f to the four terms, and so forth. So we insert this into the monotony relations, and then the first, the lowest relation, the lowest order relation, the relation we get the lowest order is simply this um, KK type relation for Einstein and Mills amplitudes. So what do we get at, at the next leading order, at, which is alpha prime squared? Uh, and we should expect some cj like relation. Indeed, you see here that this combination looks like the cj um, relation. However, we have some, um, some additional terms coming from this um, imaginary, pure imaginary part, which, which is non-zero, and then there's also contribution from the from the tube, from this piece. So that means this gives correction to PCJ relations. 
and you can of course compute them, but note that this imaginary uh, parts, these three terms are non-zero. You can see it, for example, that when you go to the five-point case, this relation holds, which is which is not the KK relation, because the KK relation would have a plus sign here. Now, um, let me come back to, to our um, full-fledged uh, mixed, mixed amplitudes involving n-2 um, open strings and one closed string. So that was the form we got, uh, and we can um, we can now take the field theory limit of this formula, which means essentially, um, because the S is, contains this alpha prime, so we, we essentially replace the sign factors by its, its arguments. And that is the formula you, you will get. Actually, here I forgot to write this additional sum over permutations. So this is the einstein young mills amplitudes in terms of field theory amplitude. That is actually the formula we had already used at the beginning, but now we, we want to have a different um, left and right moving open string momenta. And then from here you can see for, you have the, the scalar product between the, the L momentum and the N-1, uh, that there are some X dependence is, is entering. So this formula um, it contains some x dependence, so let us just see how it looks for the five-point case. For the five-point case, this formula gives the following relation. This is einstein and mills amplitude, and here we have the pure open string five-point amplitudes. Now, you can uh, consider, as since we need to, need to put our gluons in fifth, fourth and fifth gluon collinear, because we want to describe this Graviton with momentum Q. Here we need to insert collinear limits of of, of Young Mills amplitudes. And this is a, the proper definition of um, the form of collinear limits of n minus 1 and n gluon. And then you get this um, ST factor which 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 is um, which described as X dependentness. And then there are sub subleading pieces. And actually you can you can show that the first piece, the leading piece, in this combination drops out due to BCJ relations. That means this combination on the left hand side um, starts already or gives or provides already the subleading pieces. So, in other words, what we get is uh, relations between subleading terms of Young Mills amplitudes related to Einstein Young Mills amplitudes. And this you can um, set up for, of course, for any. For any end, like for the six point case, then you get this relation. You can consider permutation of clones, and by that, note that, as I said, this will contain subleading, the subleading parts of the Young Mills amplitude, so you get equations for the subleading piece, and by that, you get um, as many independent constraints for the subleading terms. And um, of course, uh, um, the bad thing is that we, we, we have. We need as many in addition constraints to, to, to fully solve the system of equations, and this is still an open question. And, and, and Jan will talk about this tomorrow, as I think, as he told me, and so maybe he has some more, more progress compared to um, his last talk in Chicago. Now, let me come to my final um, action which somehow um, uh, relates to the, what I have pre um, previously said about einstein young mills amplitudes, writing, writing einstein young mills amplitudes in terms of, of um, n, point, um, n plus 1 point amplitudes in terms of um, pure n plus 1 point clone amplitudes. So this here, now, we don't, we don't use any string theory, so this is um, purely motivated for um, it's, 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 it's a field theory computation, but it's actually motivated from string theory. So we can express the n graviton amplitude in Einstein gravity um, as collinear limits of, of certain linear combination of pure super young mills amplitudes. And in fact, uh, a n graviton amplitude will be expressed in terms of a 2n young mills amplitudes where pairs of, of gluons go collinear. 
So, let me show how it looks like. This is the aim graviton amplitude. So, uh, the, these are the momenta of the aim minus one graviton, and the nth graviton is um, the momentum is, is, um, is summed up um, by, by P and Q, and this is the helicity of the nth graviton. And here we have, um, as I said, a two egg gluon point amplitude where pairs of gluons like so, like one and one and they go collinear. So again, here you see there's no problem to, to um, send this two momenta collinear because there's no singularity. A problem appears with, with the last with the last two uh, clones, Q and the P, describing this, this last or the nth graviton here. Of course, naively, this is just zero because this is, this is, um, this is zero to the three, so this is order three in, in the S, SPQ Mandelstamm, which, which would be simply zero due to the collinear limit, but that means here we have to extract a cubic singularity in order that we get a finite and the version from here, and this will be actually then exactly the end graviton amplitude. So how does it work? Huh? So this is this two n gluon amplitude from before. It has a singularity, or it has a pole exchange um, p minus q over two. This comes because um, so we have momentum conservation for the full two n point gluon amplitude. So we have remember we have. Uh, for the first n minus three gluons, we have all in all appear they all appear in pairs, so they have, uh, they have uh, two times the momenta. And the last the last two gluons describing the last graviton has they have momenta p plus q. And you can uh, from this equation you simply get this. So that explains why this pole can be written as p minus q over two. So now that we need to find a, a cubic pole in in P minus, so we need to find a p minus q to the six uh, denominator to, to cancel this brief actor. So that means I need, need to be another p minus q to the four from other exchanges. And indeed, when you look more carefully, here there's, a, there's additional poles coming because when you when you compute uh, this 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 contribution here, so you just sum up this um, first n minus one momenta, and then you get, on this formula, you get uh, one, one over two p plus q, which gives this pole here. So in to and the same from this diagram, so you get a total of of p minus q to the six, uh, cancel the, the brief factor. So that means, you, now you have just to put things together. So here you have, a, you need your, your three point uh, young Mills amplitude, and here, here as well, and then you have to multiply this with the corresponding propagators and and um, the other young mills amplitudes. And so this if you put this together, so here are the young mills amplitudes for the three-point case, then you exactly find this relation because then um, you will cancel the, this factor together with the young mills three-point amplitude which will factor the previous will, will cancel this, this term here. And then out of this formula uh, you will exactly find this result here, which is, of course, the famous uh, KLT representation of the, of the n graviton amplitude. But uh, recall that um, what we're writing here, using here, is that uh, we enlarge the, num the number of gluons to, from n to 2n, and, and then get a linear relation, so get a one-to-one -one relation between graviton amplitude and, and gluon amplitude. This is complementary uh, or opposite what is, what is of course um, done in KAT. But uh, this is also more natural from, from a string, string, string theory point of view. So let me conclude uh, what we have found. We have found some new expression for Einstein Young Mills amplitude, where, where in particular uh, we map um, n plus one point young, Einstein Young Mills amplitudes to pure um, gauge amplitude, n plus one point gauge amplitudes. <coughs> Uh, we have then uh, investigated monodromine relations for mixed string amplitudes describing Einstein Young Mills amplitudes. And they give uh, rise to, first of all, to um, class coif relations and then some modific modifications of BCJ relations. And of course, you get relations for, for higher order string amplitudes. 
And in all this uh, results, uh, we, we obtain DDI expressions in Pantas KLT. That means uh, amplitudes are meant to amplitudes and not to, to squares or something like that. And as I said, this is, uh, this is much more structural, also coming from string theory that you, you, um, you should um, map amplitudes to amplitudes and not to squares of amplitudes. And, and this gives some, some unifying um, of graviton scattering into gauge amplitudes. So um, I've shown you this example where einstein manimitz amplitudes are purely written in terms of gauge amplitudes, or even the your uh, graviton amplitude that can be written as a, as a gauge amplitude. And uh, that seems that maybe there's some underlying gauge uh, structure in quantum gravity, and of course this needs more, more results and uh, more discussions. Thank you. But um, some some of these uh, um, aspects of this result should take over because um, also in field theory, I mean, you have, you have the KT relations at three level, and then you, you um, in a way uh, apply them also for, for for higher loops. So you expect this equivalence between closed string and open string amplitudes. Mm -hmm. So you expect this relation between. Closed string and open string amplitudes with twice the number of insertions to hold a even a higher genius. The short answer is yes, but the long answer is that uh, when you, for example, start discussing monotony relations or AT relations at one loop, things get uh, much more complicated. But but still, I mean, you get new new effects as well. But um, at the end, I think there should be some. Some similar structure we found. Um, in, string theory, in the string theory context, it's very natural to discuss different boundary conditions on the um, on the uh, at the boundary of the world sheet. Um, is it, does that have any repercussions? For have you thought about it? Uh, yeah, it's equal. It's really that it's incorporated in, in this whole setup because when you have different boundary conditions um, on, on the deep brain, um, then that, that is exactly the case when the left and right moving momenta of the closed strings are different. And that's actually why why you do the, perform these computations uh, with different left and right moving momenta because then you have, I mean, in the simplest case you have you have just uh, you just move from Neumann to Dirichlet boundary conditions and uh, Q1 is is Q while Q2 is minus Q. But you can also have mixed boundary conditions and then you get more complicated setups. This is completely built in, in this. Uh, so in Einstein Yangon theory, you also have um, double trace and, and triple traced divisions, um, basically intermediate vector exchange. Mm -hmm. Do you have a good way to, to get them as well from some collinear uh, or soft <laughs> approach? Not, not at three level. I mean, at, I mean at genus one, yeah. you will have this uh, non dana and you will, but not, not at three level. At all. I don't know. How. To understand correctly that all your formula are valid only for the D9 brains or are valid also for the DP brain? I mean. You mean the formula I showed for the, for the generic? Um, yes. This is valid for any, for any D brain setup because, um, as, as I said, yes, this formula, for example. I mean, this, this is because uh, we have completely arbitrary Q1 and Q2 because they have closed string momentum. So if you have mixed boundaries, so you have a com some some string or any default compactification with with um, fluxes, then uh, Q1 and Q2 depend on the flux, on the two-form fluxes, and then 
um, you just have to insert them into the blue one. It's completely arbitrary. And, and um, actually, this is the first, first result ever on, on this um, for any arbitrary external number of legs um, where you have this formula is, is um, completely arbitrary under the conditions. Yeah. <coughs> I just want to check the. Um, when you have the uh, monogamy, mm -hmm. and you map the closed string to sort of open string integrations, and you actually do it in the closed string alone. I mean, without reference to monogamy, or is it? Um, yeah, I could um, essentially um, consider the case with. Here I only consider one closed string, but I could um, consider many closed strings, and of course you get. You can imagine that you get um, for each closed string you get some kind of tube or contribution, and you can forget about the open strings here and, and also consider closed string amplitudes on the disk, and then this would be exactly this graviton case and uh, where, where graviton where end gravi endpoint graviton amplitude. This describes the endpoint graviton amplitude in terms of n gluon amplitude. So if you would would, have, would now this formula, you would now how to you exactly would, would now how to how to write um, our result uh, here um, for, for n gravitons because it would give you a one-to-one -one relation um, to on the disk. Uh, I just make a comment, or a special confusion. Um, if you have no um, no open strings, mm -hmm. boundary, you just have closed strings, then you of course have to add the um, normal identical diagram to in order to get a consistent string. Yeah. Is that um, another way of saying that is that the amplitude on the disk is just with closed strings? Um, it's not well defined. Divergent. You mean just 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 um, close strings, pure close? Well, the string theory is a tadpole. Yeah, but then you you just need to compute all the, um, the contribution from the projective plane. The projective plane, but that won't give you. The graviton amplitude on the projective plane surely not be expressible in terms of open strings. And, and what is the statement? No, I'm just, well, I'm just wondering what you're saying. You, you, you seem to imply that you could express graviton amplitudes in terms of open, special collinear string amplitudes. Or open, not mm -hmm. amplitudes. I'm just wondering. But the, I assume that also the, um, the graviton amplitude on the projective plane can be expressed in terms of open strings. Yeah, there's no boundary. And and um, still, so what what is um, what is your concern? I mean, yeah, there, it has to be checked what, what, what it is. Yeah. All right, let's close this session. Let me remind you to please return at 2 p.m. sharp for the afternoon session. Let's thank you.